Hey everyone, and welcome back to my Making a Coil Gun series. Last episode, I showed how we can use capacitors to improve our launches. In this video, I'm going to further improve this by adding more coils into the mix. So far, we have this setup, where a capacitor is being charged up to a few hundred volts and promptly having that energy dumped into a coil. This launches a small projectile with a decent amount of force. This is already pretty good, but I have a few options to make this launch even faster. Our setup involves a coil accelerating a projectile. The final velocity of the projectile can be modeled with the equation v equals a bar times t, or velocity equals the average acceleration times the period of acceleration. To increase the final velocity of our setup, we can either increase the magnitude of the acceleration or the time in which the object is accelerating. Now the first is one we've already explored, increasing the magnitude of acceleration. We decided we could do this mostly by increasing the voltage going into the coil. We figured we could use these capacitors to power the coils, which have a limit of 550 volts. The second is increasing the time the object is accelerating over. This is a little more tricky since the capacitor is dumping all of its power into the coil in milliseconds. Here you can see as I short the capacitor how the voltage across it drops almost instantly. We could try using bigger capacitors to prolong the duration of the pulse of power. This would increase the amount of time the capacitor could discharge into the coil before being completely depleted, therefore increasing the period of time that the projectile is accelerating for. This seems like it would work, but I'm a little worried about increasing the pulse duration. As I showed in the first video, if the pulse duration is too long, the projectile can pass through the center of the coil and still be influenced by the coil's magnetic field. This will work to pull it back into the coil again, slowing it down. This means we don't necessarily want to increase the period of acceleration by increasing the time the coil is on for. We can instead extend the duration of the projectile's acceleration by adding another coil for it to accelerate through. Here's a quick demo of how that would work. We'll have the first coil act just like before and pull the projectile forwards. After the capacitor is depleted though, instead of just launching out the end of the barrel, we can have a second capacitor dump energy into a second coil, pulling on the projectile again, adding to its velocity. This is going to complicate things slightly. The obvious complication is now we basically have twice the components to deal with. The not so obvious complication lies in how these sets of components are going to interact with each other. As the projectile comes out of the first coil, the second coil needs to begin to dump its power right as the projectile moves into the correct position to get the maximum amount of acceleration. If the coil is too early, the projectile doesn't get influenced by the magnetic field in the strongest possible way. If it's too late though, the coil will work to pull back on the projectile, which actually slows it down. We want it to finish accelerating ideally when it's in the exact center of the second coil. Having a human try to switch the coils at just the right time is basically hopeless. I need some way to precisely time when to activate the second coil to get the maximum possible acceleration. The easy solution is to use raw timings. Fortunately, we can politely ask a microcontroller to do the switching for us. We can use two outputs from the microcontroller for triggers for the first and second coil. We can also use a push button as an input to act like a trigger. We could run a program to trigger the first coil when the button is pushed, then wait some defined period of time before triggering the second coil. I made a setup here with LEDs to demo what I just described. This component is an LED bar graph. It has 10 LEDs, but we'll only be using two of them for this. These are current limiting resistors, so I don't blow out the LEDs. I have my power and ground for the microcontroller hooked up here. Finally, I have this button and accompanying pull-up resistor here acting as a trigger. Now if I press this button, the microcontroller will immediately turn on the first LED. It'll then wait half a second, and then turn on the second LED. This triggering system works well enough, but there is something quite problematic about it. What delay should I use between triggering each coil? It turns out there's really no good answer for every launch. If it's cold one day, the barrel might shrink slightly and decrease the speed of the projectile. If it's windy, the projectile might get blown into the barrel slightly, slowing it down. If the capacitor banks are charged slightly higher than normal, this might make the projectile shoot faster. I can go on and on with these. For a portable gun, I suspect it would be very difficult to hard code timings for when to fire each coil. There's just too much variation, and sometimes the projectile would be way too early, and sometimes it would get slowed down and be way too late. It would be fantastic if there was some way to detect where the object is in the barrel, as opposed to trying to guess where it is. In a shocking turn of events, there is. One popular solution involves using a light beam and an optical sensor to find where the object is in the barrel. If we place an LED in the barrel between the coils and have a light sensor on the opposite side, we have a sort of optical detector. Normally, the LED would shine on the sensor, turning it on. Now, if the projectile is in the way of the light beam, the sensor no longer receives any light. This effectively turns the sensor off. If we use a microcontroller to measure the signal created by the sensor, we can find when the projectile is ready to enter the second coil, and use that as the trigger to dump the energy from the capacitor into the second coil. 
Using the optical sensor, the microcontroller is not affected at all by the speed of the projectile since it knows its position. Randomness in firing conditions therefore has a much smaller effect on the effectiveness of the second coil. The optical sensor isn't perfect though. You really have to place it in the perfect position to have the coil pull the projectile in the most efficient way possible. Remember, if the coil isn't on at the right time, the projectile doesn't get influenced by the magnetic field in the strongest possible way. The optical sensor is slightly more complicated than I let on. I mean, not that much more complicated, but it isn't super simple either. I have an infrared or IR LED that emits IR light when powered. We can detect this with an IR receiver. This specific receiver was actually not the best fit for this project, as it was made to detect IR signals from remote controls and things like that. For my test setup here, I have an IR LED connected to power through a resistor. The resistor limits the current so I don't blow out the LED. I also have the phototransistor hooked up to power. This extra pin is the signal pin. I'm going to start by pointing the LED at the sensor, which simulates an unbroken light path in the barrel. If I measure the voltage on the signal pin right now, we'd expect it to be high since the sensor is being illuminated by the LED. And here you can see it reads about 5 volts. Now if I block the light path with my hand, we'd expect the signal to drop to 0 volts since there's no light on the sensor. This is where my bad choice of sensor becomes slightly annoying. Actually very annoying. You can see when I put my hand in front of the sensor, nothing seems to happen. If I take a look at this signal on my oscilloscope, the signal drops for a split second, then oscillates between high and low before eventually returning to 5 volts. Why? Well, the sensor has some extra circuitry in there made specifically to detect remote control signals and such. This means it's expecting weird oscillating signals, not constant on and off ones like I'm using it for. The sensor should still work, as when it gets blocked it drops in voltage for a short amount of time, which we can detect with the microcontroller. The sensor just was not made for what I want it to do. Let's incorporate our LED experiment from before with this sensor. I need a new input pin for the signal pin of the phototransistor. Now I'll rewrite the code so that instead of having a half a second delay between activating the first and second LEDs, the microcontroller will instead wait for the light beam to be broken. You might have noticed that there's an extra component. This is a MOSFET, and it's taking the 5 volt signal from the sensor and converting it to a 3.3 volt signal for the microcontroller. It's also boosting the signal from the receiver since it turns out that it's like super weak. This is where things stopped working for me. For reasons beyond my understanding, it will light up the second LED not when I break the light beam, but once it's recreated. Which should still work, it's just kind of annoying. Lastly, when I tried blocking the sensor for a very short amount of time, it just refused to register it. It was as if nothing ever blocked the sensor to begin with. So with all these shortcomings in mind, I decided to buy the correct IR receivers to use. I'll have them ready to use for next week, or I'll design a barrel to mount the coils and sensors on. Until then though, there's just not much I can do. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see the multi-coil tests. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask below. Until next time.